Blog Talk Radio. Pastor Dean Pepin, and this is the Midnight Miracle Hour. I am telling you, God has performed miracles in my life today. He is going to do it tonight. If you need prayer, if you need any kind of counseling, uh, if you need somebody to talk to, by all means, give us a ring. Our telephone number here at the Midnight Miracle Hour is uh, 646-716-4490. If you're listening to me at a later time, if you're listening to me uh, because you've uh, chosen this program on demand and you're listening to it in your archives, we broadcast nightly at midnight. And um, you can call in live then. We've been talking about trust, how we should trust God's character. And I, I am of the belief, I'm telling you something, my friend. I am of the belief that if we can grasp perfect faith, perfect faith, perfect faith, that we can do anything as Christians. Um, I know I will anger certain people when I say some things that I'm about to say tonight. But I have to take that risk um, because there were not too many ministers who will who will go on the uh, political front because they're afraid or they're, uh, they've been instructed by their church elders not to get political because they might lose their tax status. Well, I don't have to worry about that because I don't have a tax status. Um, we are... A, not a nonprofit organization, although, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, I draw expense money from the ministry. Um, that's just about it. I'm not a paid employee. We don't have paid employees. We uh, give everything we can away. That's wealth. <laughs> that's wealth. That's being rich. When you. Uh, Thank God for everything he has given to you by giving it away. That to me is being rich. I'm a very rich person. You know, today um, I had to uh, make a hospital call in a uh, the, the largest city of Connecticut, the largest city of Connecticut, Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm, I know we have listeners there. Um, and Bridgeport is called the Park City. And I, I, I tend to um, to get my frustrations out by writing. And I wrote this today, and I put it on my... Uh, I didn't put it on my blog, but I put it on... I have a little bit of laryngitis. I apologize. Do we have a glass of water? I'm going to have to do a commercial to get a glass of water. Um, I I wrote this piece, and and I think it's indicative of the country. And we're going to get into trusting God's character and and getting into some Bible lessons and Bible verses in just a second. We're slowly getting into that. But I I wrote a piece about Bridgeport, Connecticut. And... um, Unfortunately, Bridgeport is ranked among the top ten as far as violence and crime is concerned. Bridgeport, Connecticut is ranked high among uh, 
the cities that have bad traffic. I mean, there's not too much good to say if you're if you're comparing Bridgeport to other cities in the United States of America. There's not a, a heck of a lot good to say about Bridgeport. But but listen listen to what I wrote. Just a little bit of it. Bridgeport, don't sell your soul. You know what I'm really saying is. USA, don't sell your soul. Philadelphia, don't sell your soul. New Jersey, don't sell your soul. Bridgeport, don't sell your soul. Detroit, don't sell your soul. I went through Bridgeport, Connecticut today, with, which is the largest city in the state of Connecticut population-wise. And it is officially, officially Bridgeport, Connecticut is called the Park City. And I remember it as a as a young boy, how beautiful it was. And uh, I went through uh, the Park City, Bridgeport, Connecticut today, and just taking a glance at what used to be village greens that were at one time filled with families enjoying God's creation. They were enjoying the grass and the trees and the shade. At one time, it made me pray when I took a look at it because those perfectly placed parks that punctuate the city's concrete have completely lost their dazzle. And I think it's not only indicative of Bridgeport, it is indicative of all the major cities, many of the major cities in the United States of America. It seems the citizens are waiting for government to do something. And all the time, we could be doing it ourselves. Especially when a city is so, especially when a country is so ravished with unemployment and people who are on, and I put it in quotation marks, disability. I'll bet every one of us here listening to this program, we all know somebody who is on disability who really can work. It's a, it's a, it's a, the, the country is contaminated with the welfare mentality. Now, I went through the, the city of Bridgeport today and I saw the beautiful parks that were, uh, populated with people enjoying nature, neglected. And I'm saying to myself, time is not the problem in Bridgeport. Multitudes of human beings have the hours to spend doing volunteer work. In your community, there are multitudes of people who are unemployed or disabled. Just take a look at some of the street corners. You go from city to city to city. And you know what I I noticed about Bridgeport today? Uh, If you look at the street corners, you have youth, you have old men, you have drunks, there is no leadership in, in cities like Bridgeport. There's no powerful religious leader who wants to do good for the city with the prospect of getting no remuneration. I believe that Bridgeport and many of the cities in the United States of America are demonically oppressed demonically oppressed. Oh, there are pray- prayerful people in residence in, in a city like Bridgeport, in a city like Philadelphia, in a city like Detroit or New York City. There's no doubt that godly people live in those municipalities, but, but the power that they have over spiritual darkness is evidently not working. It's not an indication they're they're winning. As I went through the Park City today, the, uh, the largest city in the state of Connecticut on a hospital call, I admit the, um, 
The pre-spring period we go through makes everything look grimy and shadowy and the snow is dirty and the trees are bare and, and nature is recovering from a very brutal winter. But Bridgeport, a once bustling burg, a city that was beautiful, that was famous for things like the the Beardsley Zoo, the ocean breezes, the neighborhoods with greenery. That city and many cities across the country are about to expire. They are so incredibly close to losing every ounce of their warm-hearted spirits. And the reason is many communities across the United States of America lack loving, larger-than-life leadership. I was thinking of Bridgeport today. It has too many churches not to revive itself. The church, would you believe in the United States of America that the church of Jesus Christ is not getting the message out? It is not getting the message out. It is not supporting politicians who are willing to work for God and country. Bridgeport is typical of the country. This country has more, much more to offer than a reputation for drug-infested cities and neighborhoods and petty politics and, and pathetic parks. Men and women, those of you who are listening to me in Bridgeport, Connecticut, find a spiritual leader. If you're listening to me in Atlanta, Georgia, if you're listening to me in Biloxi, Mississippi, if you're listening to me in Miami, in West Palm Beach, in Dallas, in Detroit, Cleveland, Milwaukee, if you're listening to me, I'm telling you, wherever you are, men and women of God, Find yourself a spiritual leader who will get into politics, who is so sold out to Jesus Christ that he will affect government, he will affect the private sector, and he will affect business leaders. We need in this country Christian leadership. Christian leadership, people who are who will trust God, who will kick the devil out of this country and replace the idols of drugs and of alcohol and laziness with prayer, spiritual warfare, and victory. That's what I, I basically wrote that in my uh, Facebook tonight. But this country has got to start trusting in the Lord with all our hearts, trusting in the Lord with all our hearts. We were talking about trust last night. We've got to trust God. We've got to get Christian leaders, people who are sold out to Christ, to be in politics again. Yesterday we were talking about some good outcomes of, uh, of stepping out in faith and trust. And uh, I believe that when you use faith and trust properly, we can see how things will work out well, very well. But, but, but what about the times when they don't? What do we do then? Does this mean that God has let us down? I don't believe that. The Bible is very clear about this. We do not trust God based on particular outcomes we can see. Our trust is based on his love for us and his character. In fact, um, the Bible's faith chapter, Hebrews 11, gives us some great examples of people who stepped out in faith and endured horrific, horrific atrocities without ever receiving all that they were promised. We need in this country Christian people 
who will go to Congress, Christian people who will run for mayor and not care about the money. We need Christian people in leadership. Christian people. Who will trust in God again and bring this country back to its Judeo-Christian principles. Abe Lincoln, the type of, uh, of, of, of American like Abe Lincoln, his reward came later, but God was pleased with his faith and his trust. Miracles happened because of Abe Lincoln and George Washington. We need leaders like that again, Christian leaders who are not afraid to say, I am a Christian, I will live by my Christian principles, and I believe in God and the Bible. That's what we need in America again. Oh, that sounds kind of prejudiced to me, Pastor Dean. Well, if it does, it does. But this country was, uh, is, 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 was George Washington, I read some of the accounts of, of uh, what he had to endure. He relied, he trusted in God. He trusted in God because he could not trust anybody else anyway. He was in, 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 George Washington was in an impossible situation. And it's easy to believe God on the mountaintop, but when we're in the valley and it's dark and we feel all alone, that's when our faith is tested. When we lose a loved one or a job, or we lose our health or a relationship. These are the times when trusting God is difficult, but they are also the times when we need him the most. They are the times when we need to know that no matter how bad it is, God is there and he is with us, and that he loves us, and he is going to take us through whatever we face. I believe as a Christian that we can do supernatural things that non-Christians cannot do. We can do them because we can do them through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If we keep holding on to God during the dark times, we will find that he never leaves our side as we walk through the pain and that when we come out on the uh, when we come out on the other side he's still there. He's still there beside us and that our faith has been strengthened during the whole process. This country is going through and we're about to go through some very, very, very tough circumstances. We are going to encounter difficulties. I mean, uh, some of the difficulties that we're encountering right now uh, is, is because of some of the sin. I believe it's because of some of the sin that we have entertained in this country. But Christians, genuine Christians, are going through difficulties. Uh, but we are going to be stronger. This country is going to be stronger again, and our trust in God will be even greater. I'm telling you, we've got to start movements across the country to elect Christian people to every possible office we've got to trust God 
We've got to speak up to the atheists and not be afraid. We've got to band together. Trusting God, I believe, trusting God through the, you know, my wife and I have trusted God through the bad times. And I believe that that is the deepest kind of faith there is. Trusting God through the bad times is the deepest kind of faith that you can possibly muster. You know, if you think of Jesus, it's a kind of, that Jesus modeled for us when we faced, uh, when he faced, when he faced death. And and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's, it's a kind of Job, uh, when he lost everything, he said, I, I, I will trust in the Lord. Like Job, those who have known God for years have come to a place where, where, where no matter what happens, they trust the one who loved them enough to die for them. Because we all know his character. We all know he's the one and only true God. And that is the way we've got to act in politics, and that's the way we've got to act on the job. That's we've got we've got to stand up and not be afraid to say, I believe in the one and true God. I trust my Lord who gave me Jesus Christ to redeem me from every sin from sickness, from death. We've got to constantly confess that and proclaim it from the rooftops. In the revolutionary days, they weren't afraid to admit that they had to trust God for for their next meal. You look at some of the papers, the Federalist Papers, it's amazing how much they they revered God and how much they respected him. How could we have gotten so far away from God in this country? The one and only true God is not the God that is being worshipped in the Muslim temples. They are not worshiping the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are worshiping another God. And politicians who say that we're all worshiping the same God, they're not telling us the truth. They're just trying to tickle everybody's ears. Now, the reason we don't hear all this from the pulpits is because the government has given churches tax-free status And one of the conditions of having this tax-free status is that you're not supposed to talk about politics. Well, my gosh, when you've got a crook in office, you when you've got a man who was elected to office and said one thing and is doing another, the moral leaders in the country have got to step up. The moral leaders have got to step up. Instead, what organized religion has done, and and, and it's infected into the denomination, the major denominations, and and uh, and, and and they're paying for it dearly. That they're they're going along with society instead of society going along with the church. And the gay rights issue is one of the biggest issues that's dividing Christianity today. We know it's wrong. We know that that homosexuality and lesbianism is wrong. We know that abortion is wrong. We know that. The the, the people who preach for abortion and preach for, uh, for gay rights, they have intimidated Christians. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to speak up. Even the 
moral leaders of the country are afraid to speak up. Every once in a while, you know, I think it was at the last election, um, there was a, you know, the last inauguration. I'm trying to remember now. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, this business of, uh, uh, of uh, th- this country, this country was founded on Judeo Christian principles. This country has never instilled or has never insisted that people turn Christian in order to live here is one of the guarantees that we have that the government will not insist that we turn to a particular religious belief. That is what's in the Constitution. But separation of church and state is is bull, is what it is. The people... Who wrote the who wrote the Constitution? Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Were godly people, and when I say godly people, they believed in the Father of Jesus Christ. They believed in Jesus Christ as the Redeemer and the Savior, and they said it in the Federalist documents. Now, am I saying that we should exterminate, or that we should persecute, or that we should ban? all people from other religions to uh, gather? Absolutely not. They've got a right to do what they want to in this country. Most of them came from countries where you couldn't. And you'd think that they would be so appreciative when they come to this country uh, that they would that they yes there's persecution there's persecution of Christians there's persecution of 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 white people there's persecution of black people there's persecution everywhere you go there's there's bias there's prejudice but you know what we're going to have to be big enough to get over it we don't all worship the same god and those that worship a different god than the Father of Jesus Christ. Their countries are in turmoil, poverty, and full of sickness. They are living the curse. Ministers are afraid to say that. They're afraid to say it. I know who the one and only true God is. I know that he's a good God. I know that he loved us enough to die for us. I want to see politicians. I want to see people of principle display that kind of faith. Even when I don't understand everything, I know enough to trust God based on His love and based on His character. Now, We have these militant atheists who are going around trying to take down the Ten Commandments. We as Christians, if we did not put in so many pagan politicians in office, we wouldn't have to put up with this baloney. But in the interest of the economy, we have elected officials who will fatten our pocketbook, who promise to give us big disability checks, 
who promised to fatten the welfare reimbursements. We vote for them instead of voting for God and country. We have a man who's sitting in the White House who is doing everything he can to help Planned Parenthood organize abortions in this country. And you and I, collectively speaking, elected him. How can God bless that administration? I, I don't usually re- reply to the uh, to the chat room, but I just noticed something from Benny. Uh, Saudi Arabia is a wealthy nation. However, um, they are still living under the curse. They are living uh, in such spiritual disparity. I mean, the the uh, the government uh, could very easily be toppled. The corruption and the and the uh, the the evil that is involved in that country is is incredible. The oppression of women and uh, the uh, the the rights of the average person are not honored. You can if you, if you're a Christian, you go over to Saudi Arabia and you start preaching like I'm preaching right now. I wouldn't be here to to, to tell about it tomorrow morning. <laughs> Either you you're a Muslim or you uh, your your head's chopped off. But um oh they're wealthy, but spiritually they're bankrupt. And they're petrified. They're petrified. They live in fear. They live in fear of being toppled because they have no supernatural power. They only have the power of money. And that's about to be... That that, that good stuff is going to be ending very, very shortly anyway. I... um, I believe that we in this country, if we can band together, and we can start being Christians again. I'm I'm just going to give you an example. This city that um, I was talking about in Bridgeport, Connecticut, my friends, they have a church, a Christian church, on every corner. Um... And you know what, Benny? Uh, uh, just reading your remark again. I don't know what uh, what the ratio is. I don't know how the classes are divided up in uh, Saudi Arabia. I don't think that everybody is wealthy. I think they've got a rich and a poor class over there also. I can't say that for a fact, but um, uh, I, I believe that the uh, the classes are very, very, very uh, uh, divided. In, in Saudi Arabia, and but the, the thing is, you, you, some of those people who are being persecuted just cannot speak up. I, I could be wrong there, but um, it's a rich country, so to speak. But it's uh, it still has its it's still living in the curse. Um, I lost my train of thought here. I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. I'm going to get a glass of water. I didn't bring one in with me to the studio here, and I'll be right back. Stick around. This is the Midnight Miracle Hour. If you have an opinion 
I'm going to say to you uh, that the last 20 minutes of the program you can call. You can say anything you want for three, four, five minutes, and I will not interrupt you. You can make a statement. You can make a, a slur about me. You can insult me all you want. I will not say one word. Uh, you'll have the mic. I want to be fair and balanced. If you don't do that, then don't gripe. Let's go to a commercial, and I'll be back in just a second. Now, here's something not too many ministers will say. I don't care if you give to this ministry or not. Naturally, I would love for you to do that but I want to give you a message right now and it happens to be about giving not to this ministry but to your church but to the missions but to God's kingdom listen my friend God's greatest need is to be believed his greatest pain is to be doubted it says in Luke 638 give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Give. Give to your local church. Give to missions. Give to the poor. Give. And I am promising you that God will give back to you. Tonight we're talking about expectation. We always talk about expectation. That's what faith is. Giving God what he wants and expecting something in return. Give. You don't have to give to this ministry, but give to a ministry that serves you. Give to the church that serves you. And give to God's kingdom. In Jesus' name you will be rewarded in this life and the next. You know, because of Jesus Christ uh, and because we have uh, put this country together on Judeo-Christian principles, um, we have been able to benefit from a Bible verse that uh, is kind of uh, a favorite of mine. It's Exodus 3, 31.3. Um, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here tonight because I wasn't going to do the show because I have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning but uh, God told me to, to come in here anyway He's going to give me strength that I didn't have and uh, yeah, it was talking about Bezalel the son of Uri who uh, was in charge of uh, the tabernacle it says here, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called my name by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now, because of the Judeo-Christian principles that this country was founded upon, we have seen that men in, in the United States of America, men and women, have displayed an incredible range of talents. And, and we see this in all, all around. We see it in business. We see it in sports. We see it in science, medicine, the arts. It's absolutely amazing what guys can do. And, and where does all this ability come from? Well, the Bible says it's, it comes straight from God. And that ability has been able to blossom because we have blessed God with obedience in the United States of America. This truth is seen in Bezalel, well, it's Bezalel, Bezalel, I, I think, um, 
my uh, my pronouncer in my King James has Bezalel, but some people call him Bezalel. The the man God chose to head construction of the tabernacle, uh, and it was a large tent in which the um, Israelites would would worship God as they crossed the desert. Well, it says in Exodus chapter thirty one that that God gave Bezalel a extraordinary capability in working with metal and wood and stone. And uh, he was a master craftsman, and he was a designer, and he was able to teach others. And and God gave uh, Bezalel uh, this ability for one very important reason, and that was to build the structure that God had envisioned. God must have used his imagination. (laughs) Bezalel's story, um, if you read it in chapter 31 of Exodus, um, it's got a couple of uh, very crucial points. Two are obvious, and the two uh, lie just below the surface, if you read the read the chapter but uh, first you see God gives men if you trust God if you ask him for uncommon wisdom if you ask him for uncommon aptitude and when you ask him for these gifts in order to glorify his name Well, I believe that some of it's hardwired at conception. I think that some, my brother was, uh, my brother and I were so different. Um, my brother was, he could fix anything. He could build a house, never was trained for it. He could fix a car. He could fix a tractor. He could fix the plumbing. He could fix the uh, the electricity. It was, it was incredible. He just had an, 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 a wonderful, wonderful talent. And his son inherited that. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, uh, I don't have those abilities, and maybe it's because I—I I, I don't know. I—I I, I don't believe it's the genes as much as it's the uh, God put seeds in my heart for to do something else. But God does orchestrate the whole process, doesn't He? He makes men and He, he molds them, and and God not only gives men talents, but He also gives them uh, His spirit. And I believe that his spirit powers up these talents. When I need mechanical ability, I ask the Holy Spirit to fill in the gaps where, where, where you know, if, if I don't have a pot- <laughs> The Holy Spirit does it, I'm telling you. He lends me supernatural potency, if you want to use that uh, term. Yes, I do have supernatural powers, my friend. They emanate from the Holy Spirit of God. And I believe that some of the abilities that God gave me are to be be used for some good purposes. If God's purposes are to be accomplished, the man receiving these gifts have got to be willing to use them for God's glory. By doing the work God is calling him to do. So, if God's tabernacle was to be built, Bezalel had to set hammer to chisel. And Bezalel didn't have to go around whining, oh, how am I going to do it, and how am I going to get the tools, and how am I going to get the gold, and how am I going to get this? God supplied that for him. God supplied it for him. Because Bezalel evidently had to trust God. Not only did Bezalel have to trust God for his supernatural abilities, but God gave Bezalel and he's given you a unique blend of skill, of ability, of knowledge. 
I thank you, Lord God, for all the gifts you've given me. I laid hands on somebody in the hospital today. And I I believe I felt the power of God going through me into that man. I believe that God is manifesting himself in that man right now. It made my day. Medicine is failing this man. They can only do so much. But the superhuman, supernatural ability to heal him was transferred from the Holy Spirit into an obedient vessel and into that man today. I thank God for that. I thank God for it. God's given you a unique blend of, 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 of skill and ability. Be willing to, to use your ability. Be willing to uh, use everything that God has given to you. Extraordinary capability like Bezalel. Use it for his glory. Exodus 31.3 And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. I claim that verse today. I claim it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you have anything that, uh, if you would like to comment uh, on some of the things that I've said, if you disagree with them, I will. Whoops. Excuse me. I will give you a couple of minutes to uh, to to do that. Right now, give me a ring. I unfettered three to five minutes. I uh, uninterrupted. You can say whatever you want to say, and even if it makes my blood boil, <laughs> I will shut my mouth. So go ahead, I dare you. Six four six seven one six forty four ninety. Let's take a little bit of a break here before we uh, do anything else on the Midnight Miracle Hour. This is Pastor Dean Pepin. Uh, we're here every night from midnight until one o'clock. I love you, and our telephone number is six four six seven one six forty four ninety. Twitter. Twitter. I love it. It's a social media that inspires me, gets my creative juices going, sometimes gets me angry, and other times makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you to follow me on Twitter, at Pastor Dean, at Pastor Dean. I'll follow you back. And I guarantee you something from heaven will arrive in your spirit as a result. Yes, Pastor Dean is on Twitter, at Pastor Dean. My Facebook address is Dean Pepin. And there's nothing more that I would enjoy than to be friends with you. Twitter, at Pastor Dean. Tumblr, Notes of a Pastor. Facebook, 
Dean Pepin, let's get acquainted and be friends forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some people specialize in disability. They can't do anything for the kingdom except sit back and criticize. My friend, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, there's a reason why the the words Lord and God and Yahweh often appear in capital letters in the Bible. Um, I've gone back to the King James Bible. I've, I've um, it's crazy, but uh, I love it. Uh, modern translations of the Bible uh, use uh, Lord and God and Yahweh to indicate where the actual name of God is found in the <clears throat> in the original manuscripts. But if uh, ancient scribes According to uh, some of the things that I have read, ancient, ancient scribes used a special font when they hadn't copied um, this name onto their parchments. In the, um, I was reading in the Dead Sea Scrolls, for instance. I'm leading to a point about trust. Um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, God's name stands up from the rest of the text, uh, just as on the pages of the of the uh, of the Bible, and it uh, it was the name God told Moses at the uh, burning bush. And you know what? I'm sure that Moses. I know. In fact, I know for a fact that Moses had critics, had people yapping at him on the side, telling him that you, you must have imagined. Oh, you must have imagined, Moses. You, 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 must have, you must have been drunk, Moses, to hear a voice out of that burning bush. But anyway, the, 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 uh, the name that God gave himself to Moses was considered so holy that for a long time people were afraid to say it aloud. In fact, some... Uh, uh, real um, conservative Jews won't when they won't spell it they'll spell God G slash D they won't spell the whole name up but God's name to Moses was I am well listen the point that I'm trying to make here and I'm, I'm trying to wrap up this thing about trust the essence of faith or trust is taking God at his word faith at its root is a man's agreeing with God. When it says in the Bible, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, either you agree with that or you don't agree with it. Faith is, is a man's will to agree with God, accepting that Everything that God says is true, and it begins with God's name, which addresses the the issue of whether or not he is. It, it, it says, he, I am, I am, God's name is I am. Not I was, and with all the science and with all the technology available in this century, <laughs> this, these modern times, this culture, there's still no way to prove or disprove God's existence to some people. And you know what? You just got to rely on his word. I guess uh, we've been talking about trusting God the past couple of nights. And I'll kind of wrap it up by uh, by saying this. 
that trusting God is the key to every man's relationship with it. It's the it's really the um, it's the, the crucial element in faith is to have a craving to know God and then to earn his favor. It's amazing. Um, I found myself in disobedience with God just recently. Not, I, I really didn't do it on purpose. But he had been pestering. The Holy Spirit had been pestering me to make a change in the ministry. And I had not done it. I put it off. I procrastinated. And um, I was having a hard time in a particular area. And the minute that I made the change that God had told me to make, Things started turning around. God declares he's real. And if you believe that, and if you believe everything else he says in the Bible instead of just selecting your your favorite verses and cutting out some of the ones you don't like to, to talk about, If you search for God wholeheartedly, and I'm talking to the atheists, and we've had quite a bit of correspondence from the atheists. If you will just believe what he says in his scripture, and if you will search for the Lord wholeheartedly, Mr. Atheist, you will be lavishly compensated. You will find him. But not if you're doing it as a mockery. No, no, no. And all his promises... will come and bear your name. You know, the common sense approach to life is to first see the proof and then believe. But above all, God wants every man to trust him. Believe God's words, and he will prove himself to you, and he will. He will, re- he will reward your faith. He promises that in Hebrews. Father, I I, I want to I want to pray for the president. I want to pray for the president tonight, the Congress, Lord God. I want to pray for the United States of America and every country listening to me tonight. I I am urging I am urging them, and Lord God, give everybody the wisdom to put godly leaders, godly leaders, into office, not to be afraid to put. Christian leaders who the, who believe in the Father, who believe in Jesus, and now are not afraid to say that name. Father, let us put leaders into office who trust you and know that that is the key to every man's relationship with you. Father, I pray tonight for all those in the armed forces, for the wounded veterans, the wounded warriors. I pray, Lord God, that everybody in our chat room gets a dose of of faith tonight that only you can give them. Lord God, thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for being you. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the talents. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I've got to run. I've only got 10 seconds. Good night. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at midnight. It's going to be a hot one tomorrow.